Good morning, everybody. My name is Kurt Smith. I am the Deputy Director of the Middle Peninsula Planning District Commission. Um, and today I'm going to introduce to you the uh, our unique Fight the Flood program. And, and so quickly, um, I'll just say I, I'm, I'm a, a, a child of uh, rural coastal Virginia. I was, I was essentially born in a marsh and uh, spent the majority of my life in a marsh, which I'm very proud of, but and uh, I'm trained as a coastal geologist. Uh, but for the last 13 years or so, I've I've worked in the planning realm, and so I've got a unique approach and perspective on how to address what I believe to be the greatest challenge and greatest stressor facing our rural coastal communities, and that is flooding, um, specifically coastal related flooding, stormwater flooding, and sea level rise. Um, so I joined the PDC, the Middle Peninsula PDC two years ago to help launch and grow the Fight the Flood program. This, what we're doing here, um, you may not be aware of, but it is the first program of its kind that is built to address what perhaps may be and, and unaddressable or uh, impossible challenge at times. Um, it's the first program of its kind in the nation. And it's a web-based program that provides tools for anybody living or working in the Middle Peninsula um, to help address these challenges. So my purpose of this presentation today is, is to make you aware that this program exists. And it's, it's, it's um, in my opinion, the, the best approach available for, for addressing these challenges anywhere. Um, it exists in your backyard. You can use it at no cost. And, and today, as we, as we break into our groups and do our brainstorming about you know, what can be done in your community, you're gonna come up with a pool of ideas that are good fits for the raft one-year action plans. They might be ordinance-related work, needed plans, needed studies, um, needed education and outreach, but there's probably going to be a bunch of ideas that are more about actual projects, things that can be done on the ground, things that can be done to infrastructure um, to address both short and long-term flooding. And what I want you to understand is that this tool exists for just that purpose. Um, this is unique compared to the other raft uh, programs that have been done in the other regions in, in that there, is, there was no organized implementation tool, no program that exists there like it does here. So I'm looking to catch all of those project ideas and I want you to understand um, how that's going to work. So some quick background on, on how this program came to be. Like I said, we've, we've been working in this space for a long time and we've, we've observed what has worked and, and what has work, not worked so well. And, and some of those things are that property owners who have needs and, and want to address those needs with projects on the ground have had to work in a very disorganized um, industry. It's hard to find qualified contractors. It's hard to know who to talk to, how to work through the regulatory process to get your projects done. We've, 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 we think we've built something that helps overcome that. We've watched for years, there's been a lot of plans, a lot of studies, a lot of talking about this issue and very little action on the ground. And, and these changes are happening, they're so extreme and they're, so, they're happening so quickly that the, the traditional approach to addressing these challenges just simply was inadequate. So something else needed to happen. And that's, that's what we've tried to do here. We've, We've not only um, built tools for how to advance these projects efficiently throughout the region, um, but we've, we've built financial incentives for, for how to get them to happen through loans, grants, insurance. I'll talk about some of that in a second. Essentially, we're looking to break down the one and done model that was never going to move the needle in time to help keep our communities safe and productive um, in light of this far broad reaching challenge, which is coast uh, flooding. Um, and, and also importantly is we've got immediate flooding needs, um, flood protection needs, but concurrently happening are these long-term needs like 
that related to sea level rise. So you need you need to be addressing both simultaneously. And I want to explain how the Fight the Flood program addresses that. And so, and all this is, is predicated and focused on protecting the tax base. We take the approach that all properties that have need related to flooding, if water is somewhere that you don't want it to be and it's, it's causing problems to the land or to the infrastructure, that, that prop project is important in our eyes. And, and so we are trying to advance projects everywhere equally across the board because they all tie to the local tax base, which at the end of the day is the, the bellwether for how our communities um, um, can, can weather this storm, if you will. So quickly, what, uh, what is the program? I said, I said earlier, this is a, a web-based um, program which is, uh, addresses all types of flooding and coastal issues which um, stem from uh, flooding conditions. Uh, it's available to public and private property owners um, at no cost. Anybody can log on and participate at any time at no cost. And uh, the, the following slides are gonna actually walk you through how does it work. So essentially what we're trying to do is create an online marketplace, which places uh, consumers, which are the local property owners with qualified companies. And, and there's an educational component to this program. Um, and like I said, there's many financial tools um, and, uh, and, and consultation services that are available to anybody who participates in this. We wanna organize this entire industry to try to turn what right now is a negative against our communities into something potentially positive, trying to right the ship. And so when you log on to the website, this is where you come. We tried to organize this very complex program as simple as possible. There's basically two doors you can enter through. If you're a property owner, you click the left button. If you're a, if you're a business who, wants, who works in this space and wants to uh, be connected to all the folks who are participating in the program, you go through the right door. And probably nine people out of 10 are interested in grants and loans to actually make projects happen. That's why we put that, that the money button right up front and center. So if you go, first one I'm gonna walk you through is if you come through as a contractor or consultant, there's basically a, an entire process we have to onboard um, any type of company that provides any kind of service related to water management um, um, in this space. So they come in, they fill out a form. We actually review the form. We make sure they're qualified contractors, not just um, Joe Smith who went to Home Depot and rented a backhoe for the weekend, that kind of thing. Um, and, and we bring them in. And you can see we've got probably a couple dozen uh, companies already in this program. Um, uh, most are in Virginia, some are local, um, some are in the mid-Atlantic mid region. And this, this list is populating quickly um, and will change uh, rapidly over time as this program continues to grow. So, so that's, that's that side of things. The one I really want you to understand is what happens when you come in through the property owner door. You come in, there's a lot of information available related to uh, understanding flood risks, understanding what your options are as a property owner in terms of flood mitigation and flood preparedness, and then presentation and of, of the financial tools we have available to uh, the property owner. You click the button to register and what this does, oh wait, I, I forgot, let me back up. A little bit more information on the financial tools. Um, so we have the Commonwealth's only loan fund that can help with shoreline management projects. And um, this slide is actually outdated. Just in December, uh, the State Water Control Board increased uh, the, the, the amount of funding we have available in our, our loan fund uh, to $3 million. So these projects, living shoreline projects in particular, are uh, very expensive projects. And we went from a couple hundred thousand dollars available, which could only do one or two projects at a time. Now we're, we're capitalized at a, at a level where we can manage multiple projects and begin to actually chip away and make a difference to make um, our entire community more resilient. More resilient. Um, we have energy efficiency revolving loan funds, septic loan funds, um, 
um, to address flooding issues related to that space as well. And of course, grants. We have the ability now to align people's needs with eligible grant programs and advance grant applications in a very um, efficient uh, manner. So the grants are a big part of this. I'll get, in, I'll get into that a little bit later. So when you participate in the program, what you're going to what you're going to actually do is fill out an intake form, a financial assistance request form. And, and this takes any, if, depending on where you are along your journey, if you know, if you, if you have no idea ranging from, if you have no idea of what your uh, problem is or what can be done, there's people on that end of the spectrum and there's people in, with permit in hand. And, and so we've built a way to understand where people are along that journey and how to get them to the finish line, which is implementation of the project. So you fill out this, this uh, survey form. There's a lot of general information. Where's the project? Um, um, who are you, of course? Where are you? And, uh, and, and there's, there's four different areas of need that we try to target. One is um, inland or you know, flooding in your yard and you know, in the upland inland area. That's the stormwater uh, precipitation related flooding. Um, if you've got issues with that, you fill out one set of questions. If you've got issues related to impacts from flooding on your infrastructure, a series of questions for that. Shoreline, the same thing. And actually waterward, we're looking at, do you have a shoaling issue? Is there navigability issues? Um, so the whole uh, spectrum of, of property ownership can be addressed through these questions. Um, some people fill them out very detailed. Some give us just enough information to get their foot in the door. Anything's fine. Just the, the important thing is to, once you fill this out, what happens on the back end is the most important. That puts you on our radar and we are equipped to help work with every single person who fills out one of these forms to meet them where they are and get them to the finish line. So it puts a dot on the map. And we have the ability to screen all those needs based off the needs of available grant programs. Some grants are only located in specific geographic areas. We can target grants for that. Some are um, related to very specific things, very specific activities. And so we have the ability to create connections that way. And every dot tells a story. So people upload photos, uh, tell, you know, and, and we, so that helps us kind of create, build those narratives to advance grant uh, proposals. And then once a project is funded, um, we have the ability to actually carry it out. I've sat in, I don't know how many meetings, everybody is interested in addressing this issue, but very few people I've seen actually understand how to get it done once you get, um, once you get a, a grant in hand. And so many of these grants are, are reimbursable grants, meaning somebody has to pay for the project. If I get a grant as a property owner, as a homeowner, I've got to pay for the project and submit my receipts for that work before, um, before I can access the grant funds to actually pay for the project. So that's where our loan funds come in and it's very important. And I, I just want everybody to understand this real quickly. So the way this works is that is that we cash flow a lot of projects, especially for all the people who cannot afford, you know, a living shoreline project, for instance, which costs six hundred and fifty dollars a linear foot. That means as you're walking down your shoreline, every step you take is about a thousand dollars for a living shoreline project. That's a, a small sliver of the folks on the Middle Peninsula can afford that. So these grants are very important. We will people will take out a loan to cash flow the project. And as soon as the project is constructed, they turn in the receipts, they, they get the grant funds, they pay off the loan, the project is done. Um, we're the only locality in the Commonwealth or anywhere for that matter that has the ability to, to make these grant funded projects happen on private or, well, private, public, private property in particular. Um, public property is a little different beast, but, um, and a little easier, honestly. So um, that's how it happens. And, and why this matters is that this, we, we just launched this in 2020. It has been extremely successful, so much so that I'm losing sleep, my hair's turning gray, and we are hanging on for dear life trying to keep up with the demand because the problem is so widespread. To date, 
well, dating back to 2017, prior to the launch of this website, we've leveraged almost $12 million from this program into the Middle Peninsula localities to address coastal resilience funding. And that for a, for a small rural locality like ours, rural area like ours, that's unheard of. Um, I already mentioned we have $3 million loan fund available. Um, we have uh, the, uh, we've gotten $120,000 grant from DEQ. This one is, is fascinating because this was one of those geographic area grants where they wanted a specific thing in a specific area and everybody who filled out an intake form essentially just won the grant lottery. We were able to tell those people, do you want a living shore, a grant funded living shoreline? Um, because we just got this grant for you. It works in both ways. Uh, we just landed uh, uh, one and a half million dollars, which are supporting uh, small business competitions to develop affordable and innovative uh, resilience approaches for um, everybody in need on the, on the Middle Peninsula. That's taking place right now. Um, and we just landed a $2 million uh, US DOT raise grant, which is going to culminate in a region wide facelift of all of our public working waterfronts, all the wharves, all the boat ramps. We're hoping to make them more resilient and uh, modernize them essentially. Um, we've landed one and a half million dollars for a dredging project at the hole in the wall near Gwyn's. Um, that's got a big beneficial reuse component where we're placing the sand along uh, publicly owned shorelines at Haven Beach. Um, and we're working on what we're calling the next generation shoreline battle plans. Right now, every shoreline project that takes is, is permitted is permitted to a very, um, um, it's not engineered to a certain standard. You cannot insure these projects. They, they can cost up to a quarter of a million dollars. And, and we, we're looking to advance the way these projects are designed so that they're more resilient in themselves and that uh, all these investments are more impactful and more lasting. Um, we've got a, a septic system pilot project funded by the General Assembly, trying to create more alternatives for the um, growing expenses around maintaining residential septic systems um, and, and preventing failures in um, flood prone areas. And, and, and we're even injecting money into the housing space. We've gotten a million dollars from Virginia Housing to essentially try to establish affordable workforce housing um, for the working watermen and women that, that need to live and work on the water. We're trying to make it as safe for them to live near the water um, affordably in public housing um, for as long as possible before managed retreat is needed. Fascinating project in itself. Anyway, I feel like I'm running over and there's a lot of moving parts in this, but the, 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 um, the key takeaway here is that anything you throw at me, we're going to be prepared to catch. And we, this is, we live, eat and breathe in this grant space and in this project implementation space. So don't be bashful about putting your idea down on paper and ultimately submitting your project through the Fight the Flood program. Thank you.